Okay, so today we are looking at making Retro Arch portable. So let's say you're going to a friend's house or you're just going away abroad for a few days or whatever and you fancy some retro gaming. So I'm going to show you how to actually install Retro Arch onto a portable device. I'm also going to get you up and running how to import games and essentially how to add BIOS files just as an example in a basic setup guide. I'm also going to be showing you how to add cheats too into your games. So so pretty much everything is included in this RetroWatch portable setup guide, so check this one out. Okay then, so before I start today's setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming RetroArch, RetroBat, LaunchBox, and many standalone emulator setup guides that I cover here on my channel, Just Jamie. So we're looking at making RetroWatch portable today, and this is actually relatively simple. So first of all, what we need to do is go over to the RetroArch website. Link's going to be in my description for everything that I'm showing you today, what you might need. And what we're going to do is just go to the Downloads tab. And if we scroll down, you'll see Downloads Nightly, Download Stable. Don't bother with these. If we just scroll down a little bit further, we're going to find Windows just here on the left. And the one I'm going to be downloading is this one just here. So we've got the installation X's which we can download to install them to your hard drive but we're going to make this portable. Now like I say I'm going to download the 64-bit version because I'm running a 64-bit computer. There's also a version for 32 bits. Now if you're not sure which version, which computer version you're using then simply just go to your search bar, type in system information and you'll find system information app. If you just open this one up you'll find here listed what your computer is. In my case, as we can see, times 64 equals 64-bit base PC. So now we've established that, we're gonna go ahead and actually download the 64-bit. And just let this download. Now for this portable setup guide, I'm actually gonna be using PlayStation 1 as an example, how to use BIOS files and actually how to put games portable. So let's take a look at what we got. We got Alien Trilogy, and this is your most conventional file extensions for PlayStation 1 games. It's been ripped off a CD, and we got plenty of .bin files here, as well as a .q file. We can actually simplify this and actually compact this into one file, rather than having all of these annoying file extensions everywhere. Now, I'm gonna show you another website and this is CHD Man. What CHD Man does is compresses all of those files and generates a .chd file. Not only are you getting rid of all of those different files, which are very irritating to see, but you're also going to be saving space through using .chd file extension. So if we just scroll down, you can download CHD Man just here. Okay, so let's just clear up all of these .bins and .qs first. And bear in mind, CHD Man also works with other systems such as Sega Saturn and beyond. So you'll have to check the website out for that. So what we're going to do, once you've downloaded CHD Man, you're going to download a .zip folder. Inside of this .zip folder, we have several different .bats and we got a .exe. Now, in this case, I need to drag the chdman.exe as well as the one beneath it, which is the Windows batch file, Q, GDI, ISO to CHD bat. If I press Control on my keyboard, as well as left clicking on these two files that I need, I'm gonna just drag those into my Alien Trilogy folder, copy to Alien Trilogy, now, if we go back into Alien Trilogy, we're going to see those two files have just been copied in. All we got to do now is just double left click on the .bat and let it convert into .chd. And just wait for this, it shouldn't take too long. And whilst this is converting, what I'm going to do is just pop in a USB stick to make this retro arch portable. Okay, as we can see, I have now got my USB stick in, but I've got stuff on it. So what I need to do is just format this to clean it, to make it blank essentially. Right click on it, format, and under file system, 
I'm going to change this to NTFS. And the reason that is, is that if you're transferring games or whatever, and you're using a FAT32 device, we can only copy four gigabyte of data at a time. NTFS is a much more modern approach to formatting. So NTFS, and I'm going to volume label it as RetroArch Portable. And just keep quick format. And that's going to format. Cool. Now, if we look inside RetroWatch Portable that I've just formatted, we'll see nothing's in there. It's completely like new. Now, we're still waiting for that conversion to take place. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is the RetroWatch distribution, the portable version. I've got this in a WinRAR archive. If I double left click on that, what I'm going to do is just go into this folder, RetroWatch Win64, and I'm going to press Control and A on my keyboard simultaneously and just left click on the couple of dots at the top. I'm going to drag all of this into my RetroArch portable. And if we now go back to the Alien Trilogy, that conversion should now be done. And here we go. Near the bottom four up, we'll see aliendrilogy.chd. So again, press Control and A together. Just left click on the .chd because we want to keep this one and just delete everything. We don't want this anymore. And we're simply left then with the Alien Trilogy in .chd file extension. Awesome. So we're going to back out and we're just now waiting for RetroWatch to transfer to the portable device. And whilst we're here, we can now delete chdman.zip. We no longer need that one. So everything is now transferred onto the portable device. As we can see, we got several folders here and we got plenty of .dll files. Now, if I just remove my USB drive and I'm gonna pop it back in just to ensure everything's up and running. Just unplug this and whilst we're here, we can now delete that RetroArch archive. We no longer need that. And I'm gonna pop my USB stick back in. And here we go. So straight into it, this is the root directory of what's on the portable device. So first of all, what we're gonna do then is take a look at some of these folders. So we're gonna see system and the system folder is where your BIOS files go. Now, like I say, I'm doing PlayStation 1 with this setup guide today, just so you know what's what. It's gonna be very basic. And if you want further guidance on RetroArch setup guides, do check out my playlist. So essentially you can drag your BIOS files or paste them into your system folder. That's where those are going. And whilst we're in the root directory of this, what we're gonna do is actually just create a game folder. So I'm gonna right click in my portable device folder and I'm gonna just call this one PS1. Now in my Alien Trilogy folder, I've of course got the CHD of Alien Trilogy. So I'm going to go into that PS1 folder I just created and just drag and drop that .chd game inside of here. And I suggest that whatever system you want to play inside RetroArch Portable, just create a new folder for each system. For example, Super Nintendo, create a SNES folder and pop your games in there. Make things individual for simplicity. Okie doke, so that's now copied over onto the USB device and what I'm going to do is just delete Alien Trilogy and my BIOS folder because everything is now portable. So let's actually launch RetroWatch. If we just scroll down we're going to find RetroWatch.exe. Just double left click and this is going to open up into a windowed mode. Now, every time you open up a game or just use RetroArch in general, we don't want a windowed mode. So we can go down to settings. And if we go to video and we're going to go to full screen mode, start in full screen mode is currently turned off. We're going to turn that off. Cool. Now, every time you open up RetroArch, it should boot straight into the full screen mode. So let's take a look at adding a game directory to make this even more cooler. So we're gonna go to import content. We're gonna go to manual scan. 
content directory. Now, my USB drive with RetroArch on it, the portable version that is, is my D drive. That's the drive I've just formatted and put RetroArch onto. So content directory is D. And here's my folders. And here's my PS1 folder I created. I'm going to select that by left clicking, left click scan this directory. And if I press up on my cursor, that would take us to the bottom, just start scan. And if I use my right click on my mouse, that's going to take us out. And right at the bottom now, we can see PS1 has appeared. And here's my .chd game of Alien Trilogy. We can't run this yet. So what we need to do is just use the cursor up. Or if you're using a controller, just use your D-pad. Go to main menu and select online updater. We're going to go to core downloader. What cores are, are miniature versions of emulators which work exclusively with RetroArch. Now, as we know for this setup guide, I'm using a PlayStation 1 game. So if we scroll down to Core Downloader, this is everything for a PC version of RetroArch. So we're going to look for a Sony PlayStation Core to boot this game up with. And here we go. So we got Sony PlayStation. There's different versions of this. So I'm going to be using Swan Station. If I just click on this one, Core installed, Sony PlayStation, Swan Station. Now, if you're aware of Duck Station, there was a little dispute of some kind a little while back, and that's why we no longer have Duck Station in RetroArch. So we're going to back out of this, back out again, and I'm going to just scroll down to my PS1 Alien Trilogy, and I'm going to go down to Set Core Association, and then pick Sony PlayStation, Swan Station. That now means that every time I open up Alien Trilogy, it's going to boot straight from that one station core. If I go to and we are now inside one of the greatest FPS games on the PS1. And by pressing a couple of buttons on my controller simultaneously, this is going to bring us back into RetroArch. We can save states, load states from here, save states, we're going to save this part of the game. And we're going to go to load state. Okay, so that's about it. So if you want any guidance on enhancing the look of your games through video settings, I have got a separate RetroArch PlayStation 1 setup guide, so do check that one out. Now, whilst we're here in RetroArch, I'm going to just mention, I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but we can actually change the theme through RetroArch. Let me show you what I'm saying. So first of all, let's just close out of this game. Quick menu. Okay, so we can change the theme very easily. If we go down to settings, user interface, menu is currently on ozone. We can change this to XMB or RGUI. I'm going to check out XMB. I think it's the best looking. 
theme for retro arch just select back out now i'm going to go to main menu and i'm going to go to configuration file and just make sure to save all your settings retro arch has a tendency of being forgetful so what we're going to do is overwrite current configuration file save current configuration separate file okay so let's restart retro arch and let, look at that new theme and here we go and we can now scroll through and we've got playstation right at the end so as we can see it looks heavily playstation 3 inspired and whilst we're in this part what we're going to do is update everything so update core info files update assets update controller profiles update cheats update databases update overlays and finally update glsl shaders okay if we come back out of here and we can even add games as favorites if i go into alien trilogy and just scroll down to add to favorites We'll now see under the star, this is actually put under my favorites. Which we can see, whilst I was updating everything just a minute ago, I actually updated cheats. And as we can see in the bottom left hand side, it's extracts in cheats. Let's just take a look how to activate these cheats. If I go into my game again, resume. And I come back into the Retro Watch Quick menu. From here, if I just scroll down, I'm going to find cheats. And inside of cheats, I can go to load cheat file replace. And in here is every system that's got cheats for it. So just bear in mind, not every single game is going to have cheats for it. But we're going to check this one out for Alien Trilogy. So Sony PlayStation. And as we can see, RetroArch has downloaded us loads of cheats for, for PlayStation 1 games. Now, like I say, Alien Trilogy might not be here, but it is here as we can see. So if we select cheat and to apply the cheats, I'm gonna to go to auto apply cheats during game load. So just turn this on. And after you've turned that on, apply after toggle, switch this on. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we're gonna find all of these cheats using that cheat that we just used. So for example, I can turn on infinite energy enabled is turned off i'm going to turn this one on and we can do this for infinite charge grenades again if we just scroll down to enable this infinite gun ammo turn this on that's something that alien trilogy could do with more so and after i've applied the cheats we're going to go to core options manage core options and save game options. So all of those cheats that we just enabled will now be saved every time you boot the game up. And just remember to save absolutely everything you do within RetroArch. Just go to the main section, configuration file, save new configuration. So that's it for today's RetroArch portable setup guide. I've included some extra stuff in there such as cheats, that type of thing, which I don't think I've ever covered before in a direct retro watch setup guide. So if you like what you see today, hit the notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss any upcoming retro watch and beyond content that I cover here on my channel, just Jamie. Also follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.